Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about the Japanese Hayabusa 2 mission, but more specifically about possible true reasons behind this mission and it might surprise you just a little bit. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. Now first of all, let's get this out of the way. The Expanse Season 4 is coming and all of us space geeks are super excited. Because I think we all agree that this is the best sci-fi show out there with the most realistic science and most realistic approach to science fiction that we've seen in a really really long time. This show is absolutely brilliant and I definitely cannot wait for the Season 4 to come out on Amazon. Now, what does this have to do with Hayabusa? Well, of course, the main premise of Expanse is that the humanity has now advanced to the point where we live on various asteroids, we live on various minor planets, and we mine them. It has become a very profitable way of living to the point where generations of humanity have actually been raised on these objects and have created their own cultures. It's an amazing way of exploring this idea and it's definitely something that might actually happen one day. And to begin all of this, we need to start somewhere. And to start somewhere, we need to actually start exploring these objects. Now, officially, Hayabusa 2 mission and the previous Hayabusa 1 mission were both technically scientific. Their point was to retrieve a sample from the uh, asteroids and to then bring them back to Earth to study them in a little bit more detail. But having lived in Asia for basically over a decade now, I can tell you right now that this scientific mission also has a secondary component, a much more important component. A component that might actually be that first step that humanity needs to take to begin creating advanced space mining facilities that will very likely lead to a new generation of essentially what would be a kind of a mining rush to try to colonize and to try to exploit various asteroids for their financial benefits. Now, here's actually a list of various rocks we've already visited and actually explored. All of these objects were at some point visited by various probes or spacecraft that carried cameras to take photos of them. And you'll notice that in the middle there is a tiny spot represented by the Ryugu asteroid, which is actually pretty big, but not as big as those other objects you just witnessed. Ryugu asteroid is roughly around one kilometer in size, more or less round in shape, and technically speaking is not super scientifically interesting, even though it's one of those early rocks that has not been disturbed since the creation of the solar system, but there is something else a little bit more interesting about this. And to try to understand what this is, we need to go to a very cool simulation created by Ian Webster. I've used these simulations in the past and Ian Webster always does a really good job at presenting data in a very easy to understand way. So here we have various asteroids with the actual orbits as they appear in um, our solar system. A lot of these asteroids are not really particularly interesting and some of them are really far away, but a few of them, and more specifically the ones we refer to as NEO, or asteroids with near-Earth orbit, are, well, first of all, dangerous, and we need to always look out for them, but also, for the most part, are close enough for us to actually kind of land on. And it just so happens that both the asteroid Ryugu, which Hayabusa 2 are, is coming back from, and this asteroid, known as Bennu, which looks very similar and is currently being explored by NASA, are both really interesting for another major reason. They do contain quite a lot of various materials, very precious materials. And according to Asterank, Ryugu right here has about $82 billion worth of it. But most importantly, it's not just the fact that there is so much stuff here, it's also the fact that it takes a lot less fuel to get here. This is one of the easiest so-called precious asteroid near us that would be probably the easiest for us to extract stuff from. And as you can see, Bennu is number four on the list with a little bit less uh, monetary gains, but I think with NASA's mission, the goals were always more scientific than financial. But for Hayabusa 2 mission, the goal was always to extract as much of the actual material from the asteroid as possible, including stuff that might hide underneath the top layer. 
And the way that the samples were retrieved from this asteroid by using the Hayabusa 2 probe was actually very interesting. They essentially used an explosive and a cannon to try to retrieve the materials from inside the asteroid in order for them to study them in a little bit more detail. Now technically the explanation was that they wanted to retrieve the so-called original matter from the early universe, but the explosion itself would actually modify those materials quite dramatically. So in some sense it doesn't really make sense. It would actually make a lot more sense if the explanation was that they're trying to retrieve the materials to study the composition of the asteroid to then assess its potential mineability. Or in other words, to try to see if this asteroid is viable as a kind of a mining platform. Now, why exactly would Japan care about this? Well, historically, Japan, being an isolated island, has always been short on resources. This is essentially one of the reasons why Japan even entered the World War II. It was lacking the resources, so they attacked the resource-rich Southeast Asia and tried to take over as many islands as they could because they needed those resources to create their empire. But modern Japan is way, way different. As a matter of fact, most of the Japanese today are against any war or hostile takeover, but they are for the innovation and specifically for robotic innovation of basically the entire country. If you've ever been to Japan, you know that pretty much everything uses robots to some extent. They even have um, several robot-based hotels where everything is robotic and there's no staff whatsoever. So in that sense, Japan has become a kind of a leader in autonomous innovation, or essentially creating autonomous structures that operate completely by themselves without any need for people. And Japan is also one of the few countries in the world that has a very successful independent space program. They don't rely on any other country, including the US, and most of their missions are autonomously launched. And some of these missions are really advanced. For example, the Akatsuki mission to Venus was one of the most advanced missions ever launched. And it's still functioning today, so we're still getting a lot of data from it. It's, as a matter of fact, the only Venus mission currently operational. So in that sense, there are a lot of sort of signs pointing at one simple conclusion, that Japan is really trying to be that first country in the world to finally start mining asteroids. The successful mission on Hayabusa 2 and the recovery of all of the material will allow them to actually now analyze what's in the rock, assess the potential mineability or mining operations on this um, asteroid, and then launch an actual mining operation that might become one of the first in the world. Now, okay, all of this is technically a speculation, but it's a very sound speculation based on historical um, analysis and based, of course, on the fact that Japan has always been trying to find new ways to get resources for the country that is technically resource poor. And although on the one hand, it's still quite possible that the entire mission is completely scientific and really has only science in mind, it's a lot more likely that the reason Hayabusa 1 and Hayabusa 2 mission were started is to actually find a way to mine these rocks. And since Ryugu is considered to be the most cost-effective asteroid to mine, it does make a lot more sense to assume that this is not purely scientific. This is really one of those things that could transform humanity. If Japan becomes the first country to successfully mine this asteroid, and obviously finds a very effective way of bringing all of the materials mined here back to Earth, and specifically back to Japan, I guess, it would probably turn Japan into a new kind of a superpower. Very likely the first ever space superpower. Now this is obviously something I'm really kind of speculating here based on my adoration of The Expanse, the TV show, but this is how it all starts. It always starts with really small things. And if Japan is the first to do this, they're probably going to kickstart a new kind of a gold rush. Space rush. Space gold rush? I'm not entirely sure what we're going to be mining yet, so it's going to be difficult to name this particular event, but if I am correct in this assumption, then I guess the best name would be The Expanse, because it's sort of based on the TV show. Anyway, there are obviously a lot of other indications that this is not a purely scientific mission, but is also really meant for um, an exploration of the asteroid from a financial perspective, simply based on the fact that the way that they extracted the samples is very similar to how we extract samples from the uh, bottom of the ocean when we're looking for stuff to mine there. For example, the explosion technique is often used by the oil industry in trying to locate um, various gas and oil deposits. But I guess all of these questions will be answered once we get back these samples in late 2020, because it's going to take a while for Hayabusa 2 to return back to Earth. 
And if you'd like to learn more about this mission in a little bit more detail, I'm posting this right here that explains everything about the mission in a lot more detail and all of this is in the description below. But anyway, on this note, once we discover more about this asteroid and once we learn more about all of this, hopefully sometime in 2022, I'm going to make sure to make a follow-up video. For now, until we actually get the samples back and study them in a little bit more detail, that's kind of it. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon, because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.